Hello, awesome disciples. I'm hoping that by now you've been experiencing some great things in your check-in groups. And uh, the more you check in, the more emotionally connected you will be with each other. So I want to encourage you to continue to do that. Today, however, I want to give you just a little bit of uh, expansion on that. Maybe it's a big expansion. Uh, we want to talk about how to check in with God or with Jesus. So I'm going to share my screen here. And I'm going to put it into, let's see, the slideshow. So what we want to do is check in with Jesus for a closer, intimate connection with him. The more you share emotions and, and are in contact with each other's emotions, the more connection you have. It's a deeper connection. And that's what I want to have, not only between you and your people in your group, and with all disciples, but also with Jesus. I want to encourage you to use our flan to check in with Jesus. As you remember, flan is feelings, listening, attuning, and needs. So for the feelings, I want you, as you read the Bible, look for Jesus' emotions, feelings, heart intentions, desires, and relationship desires in, in the scripture you're reading. And ask him to show you his emotions. And as you're going along and you think you pick up some of those emotions, you think you see something in scripture, actively listen, actively listen for those feelings. Uh, it's important to understand that Jesus is fully human in every way, like Hebrews 2.17 says. We can assume that he has feelings just like we do. In fact, that's how I think we have a great connection with him. If you remember when you study the scripture, study the Bible, and when you went through the cross study, most of us, if not all of us, had, a, had an emotional connection with what Jesus did and how it hurt him to help us. We were in connection with the feelings there of how our sin hurt him. And there, it's a bi-directional thing here. So I want you to look for scriptures, as you read scriptures, for feelings that Jesus expli it explicitly says or that he may have had and probably did have uh, during the time he was there on our earth, as well as uh, continues to have, because he's still here on earth through the Holy Spirit. Look for these things. Put yourself in his place and feel what he must have felt. And I think you'll find some things he still felt, still feels today. A, for a tune with Jesus. Once you have found some of those emotions, let those sink into you and really connect with them emotionally, and then have a prayer time with Jesus, uh, telling him, uh, or actually attuning with him for what he, he, has, he feels. And it's important, I think, to do this individually in your quiet times, but also important to do it in a group where several of you can really begin to experience together with Jesus uh, the, uh, the uh, feelings he had and attune with him. Uh, then you ask what he needs. Now, of course, God doesn't need anything, but I think he does have needs in the sense that he has something of a response that he needs from us to show that we love him and we care about his situation. So in listening prayer, ask him what he needs. The example that I want to look at today is in John 1, 10 through 12. Now, John talks about Jesus and talking about him being the word of God. And then in verse 10, he says, he was in the world, and through, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all received him, to them, uh, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. That's important to, as you read through here, to capture some of the words that are stated here. And you're looking for Jesus' feelings. He was in the world, and though the world, verse 10, was made through him. Now, you feel like this. Jesus is the one who made us all. He's the one that's made the world. He's here as the Lord of all. And uh, it was made through him. We were made through him. And the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but they did not receive him. 
Now, pray about that. Think about that. What's it feel like not to be received by somebody that's your own, some of your own family, something that is uh, some of your own situations? You're rejected. Uh, and you, what's it, what are, think about, pray about what are those feelings of rejected, rejection that you would have? If you came home one day and your whole family just rejected you, uh, what, would, what would that be like? And this is exactly what Jesus felt as he was being rejected by the people uh, that he came down to help all of us. But notice it's not just negative feelings he had here. I mean, hurt feelings. He also had, verse 12, yet to the all who did receive him. Notice the difference. There's a reception here when he, he came to those and then those of us who have received him. It must have brought joy to him. Think about that. When you come home and your kids or your family say hello and they give you a hug, and glad to see you. Uh, that's a different thing than the rejection that he felt. But so Jesus is feeling both these things. And he says, yet to those who received them, to those who believed in his name. Now, the term believe, as you come across in scripture, means trust. So there's an aspect of what Jesus feels when we trust him. It's like if you had somebody trust you or not trust you, those are different feelings that come up. So try to put yourself in Jesus' uh, feet when he felt distrusted, but he also felt trusted by you as a disciple of Jesus. And you were trusting, he, gave, he, he believed in his name, he trusted in him. He became the right to become the children of God. Now what's so important about this is, we're we're orphans if we're not, or we're we're not, we're lost if without Jesus. But He came because He wanted us to be in His family, and He gave us the right to become that. It's just like, okay, I'm wanted by Jesus, and He still wants the other people, but they can't experience His wanting them to be in His family if they don't accept Him. So there's another emotion. That comes to us, but it's also a motion that Jesus has. He has a desire, an intense desire for us to be into it, back as his children. In fact, in, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, toward the end there, he talks about how he, he desired, he actually chapter 23 of Matthew, when he's talking to the Pharisees and the, and the Jewish leaders, he says he, he longed for the time when he could have his children and them come under his wing like a hen and to be with them, but they would not have it. And so there's a lot of emotions that God has. And if we can we can identify with them, if we can attune with Jesus, if we can feel them with him, and we can look at his needs, we're going to really have some great connection with Jesus, I believe. And of course, part of his needs are he wants us to receive them. He he has a need for us to receive. He has a need for us, a, a desire for us to believe and trust him, a desire for us to receive him. And he doesn't want to be hurt by reject, rejection. So think about that. Pray about that. And then also think about, okay, you're a disciple of Jesus. The positive things are how he feels about you. So let that sink in. Let that be part of your life. Let it be part of your heart. And so I just wanted to share that and uh, encourage you to check in with Jesus, do a flan with Jesus, and uh, do it with a group. Uh, I think you'll you'll find some incredibly uh, growing closeness, not only with God, but with each other.